Hi, my name is Alexander Denisov. I am part of Pivotal Unmanaged Data Team, and today I'll talk about a new feature called Name Queries in Pivotal Greenplum PXF GDBC connector. First of all, a few words about PXF. PXF is a component of Pivotal Greenplum, which serves as a gateway from Greenplum database to external systems. It allows to read and write external data and used to federate queries across multiple systems. Um, in this example, we're showing Greenplum talking through PXF to HDFS system, and PXF supports uh, user impersonation and security as well. Uh, what motivated our new feature? What we already have supported was the ability to move data from external systems such as Hadoop Hive uh, to Greenplum. And if the query is complex, then the whole aggregation runs on the Greenplum cluster. Uh, we would move all the data from external system to Greenplum uh, and uh, the complex query will be processed on the Greenplum side. What our customers were asking is to run the aggregation query on the Hive cluster itself, and using that would utilize Yarn Resource Manager and Hadoop cluster resources, as opposed to utilizing Greenplum cluster resources. And in this case, only query results would be brought back from Hive to Greenplum via PXF. And in addition to that, uh, customers wanted it to work with Kerberos and specify custom task queue per user. To allow that to happen, we had to implement quite a few features in JDBC Connector. Um, and one of them, the main one, uh, was available in PXF release 5.4. And uh, we call that feature named Query. Let's look at the use case. Um, what traditionally PXF was used for is to import data from external system to Greenplum. In this example, we have uh, the set of orders, which is represented as an external table in Greenplum. Uh, we would specify external table or D, XT. In the location, we'll give a name of the table, in this case, orders. We'll specify the profile, which is JDBC and under configuration server DB. And then to find all the orders from today, for example, we would issue a SQL statement such as select star from ordxt where date equal now. And that will cause Greenplum issue a query to PXF and PXF will go and fetch data from the external system using JDBC and bring it back to the customer. Uh, one of the use cases that PXF is very good for is federating external data. In this example, we have, in addition to the order data, we have customer data, which sits in its own external database. We can do a similar thing, right? We can define external table called customer external. We give a location saying it's located in the customer's table under a different server. And then we issue a SQL statement which joins these two tables, such as select customer name and amount of their orders uh, from these two tables, join on the foreign key where date is now. So in this case, again, Greenplum will parse the query, will give elements of it to PXF. PXF will go to the two external systems, bring data back, and the data will be joined by the Greenplum engine itself. So one optimization that we would like to do and our customers were asking for that in case where the two data sets resides actually in the same database, we would want uh, to accomplish it just with one query to the external system and do the join between orders and customers inside the external database and then bring the result back through PXF to Greenplum. So the syntax for that feature is special keyword called query colon so when we define external table in this example, report underscore ext, uh, we specify the location as pxf colon slash slash query colon report. And that's a hint to pxf that it needs to run some kind of query. 
So what PXF does, it looks at the word report, it finds a file called report.sql, it reads the SQL statement which is written in that file, and then it executes that SQL statement against the external database and brings back the results. So in this case, uh, the same join statement is executed uh, in the report.sql, and from the Greenplum side, a customer would specify select star from report.txt and can also specify additional conditions uh, where amount is greater than 100, for example. Uh, so that's the way how end users will be using the feature. To make it available, technically we did a few things. So first of all, quite a while ago, we separated Greenplum installation and PXF installation directory from the PXF configuration directory such that binary install is specific to a given release version whereas configuration directory uh, survives upgrades. So once configured uh, we can go and upgrade uh, PXF version by installing new and new releases and they all can utilize the same configuration directory. It is also a place where customers can place their JDBC drivers or custom libraries and where they can define their server configurations. So in this example, our binary install location is user local gpdb pxf and our configuration directory is home slash gpadmin pxf. Even though in real life we wouldn't recommend placing configuration directory under the home directory location. Under pxf configuration directory we have conf directory where our property files are located, there is a lib directory where customers can place their JDBC drivers, uh, their logs directory for the logs, and uh, finally there is a servers directory where uh, customers can go and define their own servers with their own configurations. Uh, let's look a little bit closer to on the JDBC server configuration directory. Um, there is one directory per server, it is a file-based configuration. Um, one example is a default uh, server which we can use for Hadoop, for example, and then we can define DB server in this case, uh, that would be DB server name. Under there we can put GDBC site XML where we can specify database configuration, uh, database connection configuration. Uh, we can also specify user-specific property files in this example for Alice and Scott. If those are two users, two Greenplum users, they would have, they might have two different user XML files uh, with their own passwords, for example. And then finally, we can have any number of that SQL files, and the name of the file would map to the name of the query that you would specify in the external table. If you take a quick peek in the JDBC site XML, it's an XML file which has a set of properties and values. In this example, we're connecting to Postgres database. We're specifying Postgres SQL as a driver, and there is the URL for um, JDBC connection. Uh, here we specify user as Alice, for example, which would be default user. Um, and you can specify any number of session properties or connection properties or even some statement level properties such as the fetch size. There are precedence rule for configuration properties. So first we do apply any dash site XML. Uh, any properties located in the in the star dash site XML file. Um, the white listed configuration options provided in table DDL are applied second. Uh, and finally, properties from the user XML files are apply last. So in this example, our JDBC site specifies the password as rabbit hole for um, everybody to use, basically. We can override it on the table DDL with the words Dodo, for example. And for the user Alice, she will have her own password and uh, it will be Cheshire Cat. So this demonstrates the precedence rules when we apply properties based on the server configuration file, table definition, and the user-specific XML file. So as I mentioned, there, is, there can be any number of query.sql files. Each of the files contains text of the query, must have .sql 
extension must reside in the server directory and it works with external table filters and partitions. So in this example under db we have report.sql uh, we can see here we are showing the uh, content of that file which has basically a select statement there and internally what's going to happen is that pxf will going to take that uh, content of report.sql and going to wrap it in, in another select with uh, specific column names uh, and alias it with pxf subquery and additionally it will append any uh, filter push down predicates which are sent from the green plan with an external query. So here is an example of how this would uh, happen. Uh, in this example we create external table report txt with a name of the customer, city where the customer is, total amount of uh, sales and uh, the month. Uh, we specify location as query report um, on specific server and we specify some partitioning data which I'll cover a little bit later. So on the left side we see there is a statement that executed by Greenplum. So when we select city and sum of total from that table and we give conditions where total is greater than 100 grouped by city. So effectively we want to see the monthly sales report per city in California where total would be greater than 100. Um, so what's going to happen inside PXF it, then it's going to take the SQL statement which is located in report.sql and highlighted here in yellow. It's going to, going to wrap it in the select statement and apply column projection so only city total and month would be selected from, from the table. And then we're going to apply predicate pushdown uh, where total is greater than 100 and we're going to do partition filtering uh, at the last element of the total SQL that's going to be sent to the external system. So let's look what happens when the data is non-partition. You can see the table definition lacks any partition close statements. In this case uh, master green plan will dispatch query to only one segment and that segment will run this whole query across the whole data set it's going to submit it to Hive in this example and when query returns the results it will get all summary data for all 12 months and it's going to send it back to the segment and to the master. If you want to achieve more parallelism uh, we can utilize the partitioning scheme in this case we're basically giving a hint to PXF that data can be logically partitioned uh, in this specific case by months with an interval of three. So assuming we have four segments in the cluster, then each segment will gonna go and fetch data for only three months. Uh, and that's how you will achieve four queries being submitted to Hive simultaneously and being run simultaneously and they will return data simultaneously and then Greenplum will aggregate all the data which it receives from four different Greenplum segments. So the question is when would we want to use GDBC name queries? Um, one use case is the federated data is actually residing in the same external database that's uh, very kind of common use case for data. Um, another case when complex aggregation query on a lot of data is better to be run closer to the data and consume the resources on that uh, external system. Um, the same functionality can be achieved by using a view on an external database, but sometimes uh, administrators are not allowed to create views, so that basically achieves this purpose. Um, as I said, like a few customers wanted to run a Hive query and control resource utilization via Hadoop Yarn, in which case uh, this gives you that ability. And um, using partition by statements in an external table definition would improve parallelism and uh, otherwise query would be run by only one PXF segment. So this is our new feature. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to contact me and thank you.